Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is clinical reasoning series. Today I am going to discuss the case number 6. Before I start the discussion, please note that this discussion is only for academic purposes and it cannot be directly related to the patient care. So coming to this particular case, it has been asked in recent, in one of your recent exams in a different form. I have just given the clinical picture of it and tried to correlate with the findings and also about the treatment of this particular question. The full clinical picture is given in the telegram group, the link for which I have shared in the below description. Uh, this is a brief clinical summary where you have the 40 year old male who is presenting with dysphagia to solid food. This dysphagia is to an extent that the patient has some form of food aversion. He has begun to avoid the foods also. Okay, right. The patient also gives occasional history of food being stuck in his throat and that he had to manually push the food down his throat. That's what is a uh, sensation which is perceived by the patient. Food stuck in his throat. And you begin to examine this patient. This patient has mild discomfort in the epigastric area and as such there are no other additional findings. So this is the clinical scenario which you are getting. The most important point to be noted here is this patient is having dysphagia. That is a point to be noted. The second point is the age group, middle year, middle aged male. Always remember an important part of evaluation of this group of patients with dysphagia is by upper J endoscopy or esophagoscopy. Now esophagoscopy was performed in this patient and this particular picture I have given in the question also. So this is the picture. So what are the findings which you are getting in this picture is the question and uh, the further question is also based on this finding only. Let me just tell the question first and then I will come back to the picture again. So the question is after taking biopsy in this patient, what should be the next step in the management? Surgical consultation, trial of proton pump inhibitors, oral corticosteroid and swallow topical glucocorticoids. So before I answer this question, first you should know what is the diagnosis. The diagnosis is based on the esophagoscopy finding. So what do you see in the esophagoscopy? You are able to note these circular rings. These circular rings in the esophagus. Can you see that? They are something like stacking. Okay, one over another. These circular rings are noted. Can you see that? This is called the stacking circular ring appearance. Stacking circular ring appearance able to follow this. Now whenever you are doing the endoscopy in this particular patient, you may be thinking whether you are looking at the esophagus or a trachea. You all know the trachea also shows this circular rings, is it not? So it is something like esophagoscopy revealing the structure of esophagus like that of a trachea. So that is why this is also called as tracheolization of the esophagus. This condition is also called as tracheolization of esophagus. So, esophagus looks like a trachea. Okay. And one more finding you can notice in this particular endoscopy is you can also notice this furrows. Can you see that? The longitudinal furrows. Okay. This is what we call it as a furrowing. Something like the ridges. Okay. Longitudinal furrowing in the esophagus. Okay. Second finding is longitudinal furrows. So with this itself, I can make the diagnosis provisionally. What is the diagnosis in this particular case based on the endoscopic finding? This is what we call it as eosinophilic esophagitis. This is what we call it as eosinophilic esophagitis. A very, very important condition for you to remember. Nowadays, with a lot of endoscopies being done, this condition is now being detected more commonly. So please make a note of this. This is called as eosinophilic esophagitis. In this particular set of patients, if you do the barium swallow, if you do the barium swallow, what are you going to get? Same findings only, you are going to get that. Can you see that? The circular rings which are shown in this section like this. Can you see that? These are something like the ridges. Okay. Can you see that? This is, this appearance of the esophagus is normally seen in cat and the related species. That is why this particular appearance is also called as feline esophagus like appearance. It's also called as feline esophagus. Are you able to follow this? 
what i would want you to know for your exams is that feline esophagus is noted in two important conditions one is gastroesophageal reflux disease second is the condition which we are discussing which is eosinophilic esophagitis i'm just short form i'm just writing in the short form eoes eosinophilic esophagitis are able to follow right now what i would want you to remember is that if they ask the question feline esophagus is commonly noted in which condition remember grd is a much more common condition in general compared to eosinophilic esophagitis so if at all you get the question again in the exam feline esophagus is commonly encountered in please mark grd as the first answer if grd is not given then you can mark eosinophilic esophagitis as the second answer are able to follow this right so this particular condition is eosinophilic esophagitis as you could have guessed from the name eosinophilic it is more of allergic spectrum disorder where the patient can have other allergic condition like atopy asthma allergic rhinitis even family members or first degree relatives can have history of allergy and that should be noted second is of course the name itself says that these patient have in the blood eosinophilia which is one of the one more very important finding which you can note in this patient however if they ask you the question how the diagnosis of this condition is made then your answer should be endoscopy assisted biopsy biopsy will be telling you the final diagnosis so what you will see in the biopsy what you will see is the esophageal mucosa shows lot of eosinophils that is what we call it as a mucosal eosinophilia which is defined as more more than or equal to 15 eosinophils per high power field make a note of it more than or equal to 15 eosinophils per high power field in this you can very clearly see the typical eosinophil accumulation in the esophageal mucosa and that is the diagnosis of eosinophilic esophagitis it is also noted in patient with eosinophilic esophagitis because it is primarily related to the gastrointestinal tract they can also have significant food allergy associated make a note of it they also have a significant food allergy associated the common food allergy implicated in a patient with eosinophilic esophagitis are milk egg wheat seafoods sometimes nuts also but these are the common ones which are implicated in patients who are having eosinophilic esophagitis food allergy implicated in this patient okay right now in this particular condition question we are very sure that the diagnosis is eosinophilic esophagitis now the question was about treatment of eosinophilic esophagitis please note for your exams all patients with eosinophilic esophagitis the initial treatment would be proton pump inhibitors this would be the initial treatment always remember proton pump inhibitor we give a trial of proton pump inhibitors okay right why you all know that proton pump inhibitors are primarily used in the management of gastroesophageal reflux disease remember most of the patients with eosinophilic esophagitis also have an associated grd also and the point to be noted is 30 to 50 percentage of the cases 30 to 50 percentage of the cases of eosinophilic esophagitis they respond to proton pump inhibitor treatment itself are able to follow this this is what is called as ppi responsive eosinophilic esophagitis so one out of two case or one out of three case is going to respond to just proton pump inhibitor treatment so that is why always always the first thing in the treatment is always a trial of proton pump inhibitor suppose the patient is not responding to proton pump inhibitor treatment then the second step of the treatment what you have to do is food elimination food elimination includes the common substances which are implicated in food allergy as i have told you milk egg wheat and seafood they have to be avoided and see whether the patient is showing improvement of the symptoms and at the same time you can also advise swallowed topical steroids swallowed topical steroids topical steroid is something which is applied externally but you are making the patient to swallow it so that they act in the esophagus so swallowed topical steroids the commonly used steroids for this purpose include one is fluticasone second one is budesonide these are the two commonly used ones which we give for a patient with eosinophilic esophagitis but remember this is second step 
are able to follow. Still, even after this, the patient is not responding. Even to food elimination and steroid, the patient is not responding. Then in the third step, okay, what you can try is systemic corticosteroids. Systemic steroids. Systemic corticosteroids. Are you able to follow this? Right. Now, what happens in very, very advanced cases, in very, very advanced cases, because of intense esophagitis, okay, inflammation of the esophagitis, these patients can also develop strictures or narrow caliber of the esophagus. In this particular set of patients, what would be the treatment which could be advised? Yes, it is esophageal dilatation. Esophageal dilatation. Are you able to understand this? So, remember the stepwise treatment. Proton pump inhibitor, trial followed by food elimination and swallow topical steroid, followed by systemic steroid and followed by esophageal dilatation. So now come back to the question. We have discussed that this is a case of eosinophilic esophagitis. Question is, after taking biopsy, what should be the next step in the management? Next step is always, always trial of proton pump inhibitors. Are you able to follow? Swallow topical steroid is the next step. Oral corticosteroid is the next further step. Are you able to follow this? The initial step always will be trial of proton pump inhibitors. Okay, right. Now, something new in this, I would want new in the treatment of eosinophilic esophagitis. I want you to remember because this is prominently mentioned in all your standard textbooks. It has been found that interleukin 5 is a major thing, okay, which diverts the eosinophils towards the esophagus and cause inflammation. And it is also found that interleukin 5 also promotes growth of the eosinophils also. So, this is found to be a culprit in, ma in, in major cases of eosinophilic esophagitis. So, that is why uh, treatment is nowadays, okay, targeting against this interleukin 5 mechanisms. Interleukin 5 pathways are being postulated and one of the new things which have come up in the treatment is a drug called Mipolizumab. Mipolizumab. It is targeted by inhibiting this interleukin 5 mediated pathways. Okay, Mipolizumab. Please make a note of it. It can come in your subsequent exams also. So, that was everything related to eosinophilic esophagitis, a recent and an upcoming topic for your exams. Now, look at this picture which I have given. This is the scopy, upper GI scopy finding. And the picture below that is a barium swallow finding. Are able to follow this? Now, you have to identify what is this. What you can see very, very characteristically is that this typical white, white appearance inside the esophagus. Okay? Yes, can anybody tell me which infection? I am just giving a clue here. Which infection can be associated with this? White, white appearance inside the esophagus. Any idea? Yes. What is this called as? This is called as thrush. Okay? You all might have studied about thrush in relation to Oral thrush and all. What is that organism? Yes, it is candidiasis. This is candida albicans infection. Candida albicans infection. Are you able to follow this? So, something like this white, white findings you are seeing inside the esophagus. It is thrush or candidiasis. Esophageal candidiasis. What I would want you to remember for your exams is two important risk factors associated with the development of candidiasis in the esophagus. Any idea what are they? One, of course, I think most of you will be able to tell me one is HIV infection, especially if the CD4 count, if the CD4 count is less than 200, it is very likely to develop uh, candidiasis in the esophagus. Second thing I would want you to remember as a risk factor for esophageal candidiasis is diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. So, two important risk factors always asked in your exams. Now, what I would want you to remember one more regarding this candidial esophagus is that the typical presentation of these patients is one maybe dysphagia. Yes, that is correct. But the other thing is they have painful swallowing, which is in fact a very, very characteristic finding in this patient. What is this? It is odinophagia. Very, very characteristic in esophageal candidiasis. Make a note of it. Okay, right. So, now coming to this finding, what is this? Barium swallow finding. You can see that there are multiple filling defects, okay, probably due to this thrush present in the esophagus, there are multiple filling defects in the esophagus. This is what we call it as a shaggy appearance of the esophagus. This is what we call it as a shaggy appearance of 
esophagus. Are you able to follow this? Okay, so this is something an additional point which you need to remember whenever you study about esophagus as an associated one or something like differential diagnosis you can study about. One question, what is the treatment of esophageal candidiasis? Anybody, what is the treatment of this esophageal candidiasis? I will write it here. The treatment is always, the first line treatment is oral fluconazole. Oral fluconazole. Remember, we have to give it for 2 to 3 weeks for the lesions to cure. So, oral fluconazole 2 to 3 weeks. Suppose, in the question, the examiner is saying that the patient has got severe odinophagia so that he is not able to take anything by mouth. So, in that case, you cannot give oral fluconazole. So, what would be the alternative medication for treatment of esophageal candidiasis in this patient? Then you have to say one IV medication. Obviously, no, oral is not possible. So, then IV medication. Any idea what could be the IV medication of choice which we can use for esophageal candidiasis? It's a newer, uh, newer antifungal. What is that? IV echino. Candin, IV echinocandin would be the drug of choice in this scenario. Are you able to understand this? Okay, right. So today you have learned two important things. One is esophagic esophagitis. Second is esophageal candidiasis. So that is the end of today's discussion. Hope you had liked this video. Please feel free to share with your friends. If you have any questions, put it up in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and please press the bell icon so that you will get notified about the new videos as and when they are posted. I will see you in the next clinical reasoning scenario based question. Thank you and have a good day.